All right, guys. So let's move on to another set of control, which is what will make the eyelid to follow the movement of the eyeball. So when the eyeball is looking like left and right, up and down, the, the eyelid will behave accordingly. Uh, so that means we kind of need to set up, set up some animation to help the process. I'm going to set a keyframe in frame zero, and then a few frames later on, go look, maybe look up first. Right, look up, look down, and then go back to zero, key it, and then go outwards, and then go inwards. Okay, cool. Now you do see there is a problem with our geometry already. When you're looking around, when we're looking around, you can see that some of the geometries are clipping into the eye. So that's actually one of the modeling mistakes uh, that I have here. So I just need to fix the model uh, with the blend shape that is permanently on. So let me go ahead and grab my model here and go to the actual blend shape for the model and add a target. Let's call this guy eye socket fix. So we need to tweak the shape of the model and don't really want to rebuild everything you built. Just create a permanent blend shape that is always on and is doing the, the fix you wanted to go for. Right? But that only supports shape change, of course, not really support uh, topology change. Uh, so I'm going to grab some of the faces that I need to tweak. right? And then Maybe turn on the soft selection a little bit. And then I'm going to drag these guys in and make them bigger. Right, maybe that. Probably need to turn on symmetry before I do that. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to do the same thing on the other side. Kind of want it to be symmetrical anyways. So. All right, do some fixing here. And let's take a look. You can see it's much better, right? All right, cool. So now after that, we're gonna set up some blend shapes on those nervouses. Okay, so in the shape editor, I'm gonna look for those two blend shapes, right? The, uh, uh, those two blend shapes and add target. So this is going to be the look up. Can create a same one here on the lower eyelid with the same name. That way, when I do things like set drive and key, I kind of like able to, I'm able to use, uh, select both of those. Okay. So when the eyeball is looking up, uh, we do here is First of all, the upper eyelid will be pushed upwards, right? And the lower eyelid doesn't do much, so we can maybe just give it a, some subtle movement up. Okay. And let me turn them off. Okay, that's, that's look up. Okay, you can probably push the this guy a bit further. All right, and then we're gonna go look down. I look down. Oh, actually, I need also to go through the animation. So let's look up, right? It's easier to tweak the shape when we have the eyeball actually going up. That way, it does feel more reasonable, right? So look down will be this, and then I'm gonna create two new target, and for the look down for both upper and lower eyelid, and not cook down. Look down. And one more target with the same name. All right, now I can go ahead and tweak those guys. The so when the eye is looking down, the upper left eyelid uh, will also follow quite a bit. So I'm gonna drag this guy down. Okay. And for the lower eyelid, um, also is moving. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Go in, and then let me uh, tweak the contour a little bit. All 
All right, so that's look down. All right, so look down. And keep on going to look out to this particular frame. I mean, turn off those two things and start at look out. Okay, just two blend shapes add to the two nervouses. And then we can just go ahead and start modeling these guys. Okay, so for this, I'm going to drag the surfaces that way a little bit. Okay, so this way, maybe too much of a soft selection there, goes up. And then the others, we can also drag along with it and then also make them a little bit more flattened because of the stretching. Okay. Uh, you can take a look at what's happening here, right? All right, for the bottom guy, we just need to do the same thing. And then the others, we can make them a little bit more straight. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right. So don't do, do too much uh, nonlinear movement. No matter <clears throat> how attempting it is, because uh, we wanted to blend them all together, it's easier there if their movement are fairly linear, right? Just just need to make it convincing enough. Doesn't really have to be super accurate, okay? So that's that. And then one more, right? So look in. All right, that's gonna be our last keyframe here. And then the same deal, <clears throat> grab the nervouses, and then we tweak their shape. So this requires you to somewhat have some uh, decent weighting. So if, if they doesn't really do the change you want to do, maybe that's because the weighting is not there yet. So you probably need to take the weighting sometimes. <clears throat> okay. My weighting is not perfect either. It's just to a level that it, it, it's enough to do those. Um, Okay, let's take a look. All right, let's look in. All right, now let me zero them out, right? They're not doing anything yet, but we can grab those two now and then select blend shape node. Okay, now what we want to do is go do side driven keys. So I'm gonna go for animation, keys, side driven keys, set. So those two blend shapes are the driven ones, right? Those two. The driver, however, is not going to be our controller because the controller, you have two controllers that could be able to control the eyes, look, uh, you know, our <clears throat> rotation, right? So you cannot just use one of the channels. The other one will not change, right? When you rotate with another controller like this one, this controller's channel does not update. So instead, we need to use the joint. So this guy will be the driver. And surprisingly, it's having some value. <coughs> Excuse me, so I'm not sure why that happens. 
Oh, it doesn't have any value. The rotation is fine actually. So I'm gonna load the driver here, and rotation Z will be taken care of up and down because that's what's happening. We'll drag this guy up. You can see now our joint is having rotation Z running. So what I do here is grab rotation Z, and that's gonna drive the look up and down, right? That's that's those two things. Let me key them. Okay. Now when we goes to the look up animation. Need to grab the blend shapes and then change the look up up, right? Okay, and then key, right? Now back here to the animation, go to the look down, grab two blend shapes, and drag look down up, okay, and key again, right? Go back to look out and grab the look out. Oh, actually, we need to go back to frame one again because look left and right or in and out the rotation Y. So that's going to be our driver. The driven attribute will be down and out, uh, in and out, right? Out and in. Key them here first with the rotation Y and go to the this this um, look out. I'm going to drag look out up, key it. Right, and then go to the last frame. And that's when the look in should be up and then key again. All right, so that's going to be the side driving keys. Let me show, disable the joints. Okay, you can see what's happening is that now we're having the allied movement, <laughs> right? Now, one thing to be aware of is that there is a hidden easy, easy in and easy out uh, when we do this side driving key. So what you need to do Again, here is select the blend shapes and go to the window, animation editors, and graph editor. And make sure that the set driven key we did on those blend shapes are linear because you don't want to control timing, right? In the in here, the timing should be controlled completely by the animator. So you want those to be uh, flat. Take a look at that again. All right. So we have the eyelid follow. All right, cool. So that's gonna be this part. The next part, we're gonna do some um, uh, cleanup and fixing if there's something, uh, some blend shift that doesn't work together properly. Okay, see you next time.